Hello folks, today we're going to explore some forgotten technology that has actually been a very important step in getting us to where we are today. Let's start with a little story. In the year 1805, high above the vineyards and winding roads near Dijon, Etienne La Roche tended semaphore station number 14. Each day began before sunrise when the fog still clung to the hills and the dew hadn't left the shutters. Etienne climbed the spiral stone stairway with a practiced gait, his lantern casting long shadows across the cold masonry. He was part technician, part guardian of France's invisible nervous system. From his perch, he could see the next tower to the east on clear days, and with luck, the tower to the west. His job was to keep messages flowing along the chain of arms and angles that stitched the country together faster than any horse could run. The first signal of the day often arrived by 7 a.m., sometimes as a single word, sometimes in coded orders that required translation. Today, a military convoy was en route. Etienne confirmed its passage to the next station his hands steady as he set the semaphore's wooden arms into their precise formation. Much of the day was spent watching, watching clouds for signs of visibility loss, watching the next tower for confirmation, watching the gears and joints that could seize in a sudden gust of wind. Visibility was everything. Without it, the line went silent. A delay in Dijon could ripple all the way to Paris. Etienne's apprentice, Jules, spent the quiet stretches practicing signal combinations on a smaller rig near the tower's base. Etienne corrected his angles with a calm voice with sharp eye. Mistakes weren't tolerated. A single misaligned code could lead to days of logistical error and worse potential losses in a time of tension. Lunch was simple, bread, onions, sometimes salted pork. The men ate quickly, never straying far from the tower's line of sight. Birds occasionally nested on the spars and had to be shooed away. Rain meant damp gear, fog meant idle hours, and wind brought its own opera of rattles and groans from the old wooden framework. By evening, the last signal came down from the line. Secure the station. Halt further dispatches until morning confirmation. Etienne made his final log entries, inspecting the arms one last time before locking them in their neutral position. Though rarely seen by those below, the operators were not forgotten. Their work was quiet, but critical each transmission a thread between cities and regions, a pulsing form of mechanical language. In the fading light, Etienne lit his lantern once more, descended the stairs, and vanished into the twilight mist, leaving his tower poised for another day of invisible conversation. What we've just heard is an imaginary day in the life of a very real system that was in an, invented in France by Claude Chappé, called the Optical Semaphore or Optical Telegraph System. It was a simple system of flags that were mounted on poles with pulleys and ropes that could be adjusted to form various configurations that translated into letters and messages. Used from the late 18th century into the early 19th, these ingenious devices allowed information to be relayed from tower to tower across the entire country much faster than any rider or messenger could carry. In post-revolutionary France and the Napoleonic Wars, this information proved invaluable and key to sustained success in military operations. Each tower had to be placed on the edge of line of sight of the previous and next tower. They averaged about two to three miles each and spanned a vast network that ran across most of the country. 
Here's a map of what the network looked like. Building and staffing it was a major undertaking. Each tower was permanently staffed, much the same as a lighthouse. Because of the visual nature of the system, it was only operated during the day and when visibility was good. Foggy and rainy days were the downfall of this network, but the sharp eyes of the operators kept them running as much as possible. While the use of flags and signals was not new, Chappé's invention allowed a much more reliable coding of messages and because of the additional articulation of the machinery, a wider array of messages could be sent. The towers were capable of 196 individual messages. The machinery was simple to build and maintain and made it a great solution to the problem of moving information as quickly as possible. The towers were an elegant blend of form and function. Their towers and flags were dotted across the countryside and added a lot of charm as well as a critical means to convey data over vast distances. As time passed, the further research of electricity allowed the flags to eventually be replaced with what we now think of as the telegraph. This had the advantage of working in all weathers and times of day. By 1844, the Morse code of transmission had been standardized and began widespread use. Even though Chappé's optical telegraph network was being phased out, there are several examples of it still in use today. The railroad network operates entirely with a semaphore system, and most of the signals are still done with moving arms. Naval signaling is also uses a very similar system to communicate at times when radio transmissions are impractical or dangerous. Even modern stoplights are considered optical semaphores. I think Claude would be proud of how far his extension of the technology has spread. Even though it can be considered a forgotten technology, its influence has directly affected almost every person on the planet today. That's it for now. Thanks for taking this trip back to 18th century France with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I also hope you enjoy your day.